Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite Professor Paul Markle and today we're going to talk about check your ammo or some advice on checking your ammo. Uh, many years ago when I went through the police academy, a fire, my firearms instructor, Doug Hunter, he told us, he said, look, when you get issued your duty ammo, the ammunition you're going to use to protect your own life or save your life out there on the street, before you load it up in your handgun, what I want you to do, take every single piece out of the box and inspect it. Visually inspect it to make sure, he said, look at the primers, make sure the primers aren't flipped upside down or something crazy like that. And what Doug would do is he would actually take, <clears throat> with a semi-automatic pistol, he'd take disassemble the pistol, take the barrel only, and each round he would just drop it into the chamber to make sure that it chambered completely. And then he'd load his magazine up, reassemble his pistol, and he was ready to go. And what he knew, at very, very least, A, the primers looked good, B, all the rounds would chamber into the barrel, into the chamber of the barrel, and he would be good to go. Now, you can't x-ray them and look inside to make sure they have powder, but, you know, from an end-user standpoint, that's about as good as you can do. And you, now, when I was younger, and I think a lot of you older guys, if you found a bad piece of factory ammunition. It was rare. I mean, it was like four-leaf clover rare. If you found a piece of factory ammo that was bad or defective or something, you would, you'd like hold on to it and you'd go show your buddies. You're like, look at this. You, you, can you believe that? And they're like, whoa, I've never seen that before. Well, right now in the United States, what do we got going? Well, we have the great ammo crisis of 2013. And ammunition manufacturers, whether they're Federal or Winchester or Remington, uh, Hornady, Black Hills, whatever, they're building ammunition as fast as they can make it. And most of the big guys are running seven days a week, three shifts a day, which is good because you want the ammo. But what happens when you increase your production dramatically? Well, who's running the lines? Well, where you had... You know, 10 years ago, you were running two shifts a day, and you had guys that had been running the ammo manufacturing lines for 5, 10, 15 years. Those guys knew those machines inside out, upside down, and quality control was not an issue. What happens when you increase production? When you increase production, you know, 100%, 200%, 300%, you have to hire brand new people. So now you've got people who previously were in maintenance or were working at the, the neighborhood burger shack or whatever, and now they're working third shift on the ammo lines, and quality control has suffered. Now, I'm not trying to dig on anybody, but it's a fact. Uh, and, and I just experienced it here recently. In the last month, I've had two separate loads in two separate shooting occasions, different boxes of ammo, different lots of ammo that had problems. Now this one right here, and I'll do a close-up for you guys. This piece of ammunition, uh, it was damaged during manufacturing. A hole was punched into the case, and there's no powder. There's no propellant in this gun or this uh, cartridge right here. Now it appears that it has a, a live primer or a good primer, and I might have been able to chamber this in the pistol and shoot it. And what happens when you launch a 230 grain bullet with only the primer? Well, it'll go about two inches and it'll stick in your barrel. And now you're having a really bad day. Which is fine on the practice range. It just annoys you. If it's the real world, you better figure out another way to stop that bad guy quick, fast, in a hurry. Because your gun now just became a paperweight. Uh, I did notice that as I was loading the magazines, I pull it out and I'm like, whoa, that ain't right. This next piece of ammunition, 45 ACP, 230 grain ball, and I'll show you another close-up. But this one right here was uh, seated too deeply. The bullet was overseated or seated too deeply, and it ca caused a bulge around the, uh, the rim of the case so it would not properly chamber. Now, this one actually got into a magazine. It was like number two or three down in the stack, and when it was its turn, it went into the chamber and it wouldn't allow the action to close. Popped it out, picked it up, and I looked at it. I'm like, huh, son of a gun. Now, this is factory fresh, brand new ammunition. This isn't Joe Bob's reloads from you know the gun show. Uh, and <coughs> right now, you guys need to understand that you want ammo. You're consuming ammo as fast as they will sell it to you. Great. But there is a price, and the price is quality control. And you can get mad all you want, but it is what it is. It, that is the case. And uh, 
you say, well, maybe that's just that one manufacturer, that one, you know, brand of ammo. Well, for uh, three years, I worked as a full-time small arms and tactics instructor for the military, and we consumed copious amounts of ammunition, 5.56, five, 9 millimeter. And what we as instructors discovered was that there were uh, times when students would be up there shooting, bang, 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 click, they'd clear it, and you'd see them eject the live round over the, sorry, sorry about that, guys, over their shoulders, onto the ground. Well, as instructors, you notice stuff like that, and then when the drills are over, you go over and you pick up the round, and you, you take a look at it, and you're like, hmm, well, the primer's dented, and you throw it in your pocket and drive on. And normally, what you think is, oh, well, if the, it had a light primer strike, it'll probably go bang the second time. So what do you do? You just throw it in your pocket, and you use it as training ammo or practice ammo or what have you. Well, what we found is some of these rounds weren't going off regardless. Uh, they wouldn't go bang. You could take a sledgehammer and beat on them, and they weren't going off. I've got a, a round that actually has, looks like the Grand Canyon dimple in the freaking primer. It ain't going off. It's not going to, and this is mil spec, out of the can, military ammunition. A lot of you guys out there probably think, whoa, dude, mil spec, that's like the best you can get. <laughs> actually, mil spec or military specification means the minimum standard allowable by the military or the minimum standard they will they will uh, receive not the greatest in the world so it's it's kind of funny to me when people sell stuff that they say this is mil spec and you're supposed to believe that that's the greatest and best premium cartridge in the world because it's mil spec all that means is that it meets a minimum military standard but I digress. So the truth of the matter is, is right now they're making, in America, they're cranking out millions upon millions of rounds of ammunition as fast as they can make it. Because you're consuming it, the military's consuming it, the government's consuming it. They want it. And when that happens, you have quality control issues or quality control slips a little or a little tick. Now you say, well, how do you, how do you get around that? Well, number one, if you're going to load your gun for real. I mean, if you're if you're going out and, and you're going to defend your life, you got a gun, you're going to defend your life with it. When you buy that ammunition, first of all, you should buy the premium ammunition. Buy the stuff that's marked for law enforcement or for personal offense, what have you. Because a higher degree of quality control goes into the premium stuff than the cheap stuff. Or And you say, oh, it's not cheap. Well, I know ammo's not cheap, but the practice ammo doesn't get as high of quality control or as many uh, steps as the premium stuff does. But when you get the premium stuff out, if you're going to load your gun up to save your life, what I would suggest doing is pulling each and every round out of that box and inspecting it and then loading it. And if you want to, you know, take your gun apart and drop each one into the chamber to make sure it chambers properly, you can do that as well. It'll take you five, ten minutes, and it may actually save your life. So, something to think about. Now, recommended reading for today. I don't have a book for you. What I want you guys to do, uh, most of you guys are, are watching this. Uh, well, I don't know how many of you are watching it on the dedicated YouTube channel and how many of you are watching it on Student of the Gun through the University and the Homeroom tab. If you're on Student of the Gun right now, studentofthegun.com, what you can do is just move the little cursor over, click on the blog tab, and you can read the latest articles. Uh, the, the article as I record this is the one box workout for rifles. If you're watching this just on the dedicated YouTube channel, what you can do now is you can go to the bottom there where that little hyperlink is. You can click it, go to studentofthegun.com, and there's tons of material, free articles. That's right, because this guy like you that you can read right now. So if you get nothing else from this, check your ammo. And for everything student of the gun, go to studentofthegun.com.